this market is struggling. Once, these shoppers wouldn't have thought twice about their weekly shop, but not anymore. With prices rocketing, this pensioner's shopping basket is getting lighter and lighter. I used to buy all sorts of berries, but now I have to choose. I also used to buy some to make jam for the winter, but not anymore. My whole life has changed. But, well, we pensioners have to carry on. Food is one of the worst affected areas of the economy. With inflation running at over 12% in the last year alone, Lithuanians have been forced to buy less meat and dairy products. Prices have gone up about 30% since 2005. And the problem here in Lithuania is that food makes up about a quarter of the average consumer's budget. A few months ago, Daniel Plow was forced to close his company, which distributed international newspapers and magazines. The family now survive on Alicia Plow's part-time job as a university lecturer and the money Daniel can earn from driving his own car as a taxi. This amounts to less than 400 euros a month. Those a little poorer were the first to be affected. One expected that it would not affect those with jobs. But after a little while, everyone was affected. I know many without work, or on part-time, like me, who do not have enough to stay in their own homes. Everything is uncertain. One still cannot see where Argentina is heading. The family savings have long since been used up, so they only just pull through because the house is paid for and the rest of the family help out. But how long can this situation go on for? A few months. We can't be talking years. I don't think many families are able to survive like this for many years. More like for months. We are poor, but we live in a house for rich people. I get so depressed about this. I've got tears in my eyes. It affects me so much that I have begun thinking about leaving here. I wouldn't want to leave. But if there is no chance of a decent living here and there are possibilities abroad, then maybe that is the right solution. The Plough family's economic crisis is not a one-off in Argentina. Over the past decades, millions of Argentinians from the country's large and powerful middle class have been pushed down into poverty. The reasons for the crisis are not new. For decades now, the country's changing governments have financed the national debt by taking out loans from abroad. It began in the years under President Menem, when a massive foreign debt was accumulated. Widespread and unchecked corruption arose which led to this crisis, a managerial crisis. Large groups in society were thrown into poverty and the middle class became the new poor. These are some of the Argentines who smuggled their money out of the country just before all bank balances were frozen. This is the black money that has been diverted via the Cayman Islands. Mr. Devoto has smuggled out $50 million that way. Nearly all of the riches fall into the hands of a small minority of super rich who take their money abroad. There is as much Argentine money in foreign banks as Argentina's total foreign debt. The president of our national bank, who is just 38 years old, has 10 million euros. 20,000 euros in Argentina and the rest in foreign accounts. And he wants to force us to exchange our money for treasury notes. He should bring back his own money and put it in treasury notes. The National Bank also houses the IMF representative. He has something to admit. The middle class you know, did, was reduced in size. That is true. And uh, now we regard this obviously as as, as very unfortunate, um, it is a very sad story. 
High above the city, at the World Bank, they know about the mountain poverty from their report. 2002 was a tough year. Poverty has skyrocketed. It went up from 38% to 58%. Another undercover video shot from a moving car shows Zimbabweans waiting hour after hour in massive queues, searching for necessities of life. Bread, maize meal, beans, meat. They queue from first thing in the morning until late in the evening. The cruelest irony is that in a country with rampant poverty and an unemployment rate approaching 90 percent, Almost everyone on these streets is technically a millionaire. Inflation in Zimbabwe is now the worst in the world. Acknowledged by the government to be running at over 7,000 percent, although experts put it much higher. One Zim dollar, once equal in value to one US dollar, is now actually worth less than a single sheet of toilet paper, offered in this store in bulk for one and a half million dollars per pack. They say they're waiting to die, some of them alone. They are the forgotten victims of Zimbabwe's economic crisis, and they're penniless. But the irony is that some of them had good jobs, but the money they diligently put away for retirement is gone, eaten away by the country's soaring inflation levels. They say the one million Zimbabwe dollars a month they get from government, less than one US cent, is pathetic. I don't expect the dollar to collapse. Not at all? No, not in the least. No. Not worried. I work for the New York Stock Exchange. No, you, you, the dollar is going to be very strong. <laughs> Never. Never going to collapse. You can't just run a deficit at this level. It's a historic deficit, and it's getting worse. And I think the career politicians on both sides of the issue, both sides of the aisle, Republican and Democrat, have been unwilling and afraid to address the deficit, and someone's got to. A lot is hanging in the balance. I mean, we are really, really on the verge of a significant economic decline in this country. What we've already lived through in 2008 and what we've experienced thus far in 2009, this is not the ending. This is not how the crisis ends. This is how it begins. And of course, the most unfortunate thing is that the U.S. government is doing precisely what I feared they would do. They are responding to this crisis. They are trying to solve the problems they created in exactly the manner that I feared that they would. And that's the reason that I need to go to the U.S. Senate. I need to put a stop to this before it's too late. Look at what's happening today. The dollar index, again, is getting ready to break through the 76 level, we're making new lows again today uh, for the move in the dollar. Again, very little uh, nervousness or worry uh, in Washington or on Wall Street with respect to what's happening to the dollar. The dollar is going to lose a lot more value. And this is not a positive development. This is a big negative for every American citizen, every American who earns wages, every American uh, who has savings. Uh, everybody is going to lose.